Hello, Michael here again. Um, I had a request from one of the people on my previous XGen video to do a tutorial on how to UV map the color on uh, on the XGen uh, to define the color throughout the, the hair. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that uh, really quickly, just breeze through the, the XGen part of it and then get down to the nitty gritty. So the first thing that we wanna do is I'm just gonna create an environment um, light. Um, and then I'm going to bring in a mesh. Um, you can do that from Explorer in case you didn't know. You just drag them in, which is super handy. Um, then I'm just going to smooth him and we're going to create a new description. His description is going to be furry guy, furry guy, and the collection is going to be called furry guy fur. Groomable splines, create that. Okay, so grooming, we're going to make it 10,000. Uh, we're going to change the length to 0.1 and the width to 0.005. Now this is going to be different on each one of your meshes, depending on how big it is and how many uh, polygons it has, etc, etc. On this, I know what this mesh is just uh, from having done this before when I was practicing. Um, so I'm just going to update that. And I'm just going to quickly render to show you what it looks like. Uh, so currently he is um, very gray and very black, which is fine. That's what he's meant to look like. Um, okay, so we're going to go to primitives. Um, we're going to change the taper to one. Um, we're going to make sure the renderer is on. That render wouldn't have been very good. Let's try that render again, shall we? So we can actually see what he looks like. There we go. Um, sometimes Render Man just deselects both of its renderers, which is really cool. So make sure that you go up to renderer and just select um, RIS, which is the renderer I will be using for the rest of this tutorial. All right, um, so under the preview output window, we're gonna change the renderer to RenderMan because that's what we're using. And we're gonna create a uh, Pixar Marshner hair shader for the hair. All right, so now that that's done, um, this is where things get different. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a custom shader parameter um, under the preview output window. Um, when you did it in um, Mental Ray, you used to do it up here if you wanted to grab PTX color. Um, it doesn't work the same for, um, for Render Man. So um, we're gonna name this parameter. It's gonna be called um, uh, Fur Color Map or Fur Col Map. Um, and make sure you set this, uh, this drop down to color and then click the little plus. And then we're gonna click on this drop down arrow and click Create Map. Leave that as the default. Map resolution, the higher you put it, the more um, detail you're gonna get on the fur um, in the UV space. Uh, so if you've got lots of like fine stripes or dots or polka dots or something like that and you want those to look clearly defined on lots of fur, then the higher the map resolution, the better for you. Um, this doesn't matter. So we'll click Create. Um, and what happens is it will bring up the paint tool because it's expecting us to want to paint on this map. Uh, we're not going to do that though. So um, don't worry about this. You can just hit Q and go back to your selection tool. Um, but you do want to click save and update the map. So every time you change something with the color uh, on the map, you'll need to click save. So it updates this and pipes it through, pipes the um, UV map through to the PTX map. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry too much about it. Um, and I'll show you where we're at with the render now. So not a lot has changed, which is exactly the way it should be. So um, we're gonna bring up the hypershade um, thing now. Uh, I'm gonna clear all that out. And uh, this is the Lambert that got created when I brought in the, um, the mesh. Um, you don't need it. Um, so I'm going to just delete it and I'm going to show you the way I do it. Um, I'm going to make sure that the, right, first actually I'm going to apply a shader to him. So he's got a blue shader on him now. That's just the standard uh, Pixar Disney default shader thing of a bob. Uh, I'm just going to make sure because sometimes this doesn't assign properly. So I'm just going to assign that to the, uh, the Martian here to the fur again. Um, now we're going to grab this guy and we are going to graph it out. Um, and now we're going to tell the shader uh, that we're going to be piping in PTEX color into it. So if under the RenderMan RIS, you're going to go to Patterns, um, and then you're going to go to Pixar Primvere, um, and that's just by clicking on it, it's going to appear 
in this little scene. Um, and then we're going to change the variable name to be the same as the um, custom shader parameter name, which was fur coal map. So we're going to change that to fur coal map. And we're going to change this drop down to be color so it knows what it's doing. And if you just uh, click on this and hit three, it's going to drop it all out. And then we're just going to pipe in result RGB into the diffuse color on the Martianer here. And it's going to come up with a weird error. Um, I'm not 100% certain why that is at the moment, but we can get this bad boy to work anyway. Now, at this point, if you render, you're not going to get anything. Um, that's because we need to set the texture of the PTEX um, map to be the same as the UV map that you want to apply. So um, you would have thought it's this one. It's not, though. It's this one here. Um, so uh, don't ask me why it changes to file one. I think something funny happens when you delete it sometimes. If you can't find it, you might have to hunt around. It's best to do this in a scene without lots of stuff in it um, just to try it out. You could all actually, I can show you another way. You just grab your, um, clear that, grab your thing and click that. And there you go, this thing here. So it's file one. Um, so when you click it in the, the outliner here and then you click the, um, the pipe button, um, it's going to show you everything that pipes out of it. So uh, this file selected, I'm going to pipe in the UVs that I've already created. You can see they're a lovely orange and pink and stuff and I'm getting texts, that's nice. Um, and then that's fine, you can see that's applied. So now, um, if we go back into the scene with the XGen open again, you're going to have to hit save again because we're updating the PTEX map. Um, and then we're going to hit that to refresh it. And then we are going to render. All right, so as you can see, as it renders up, um, you're getting all the colors that I had on it. Um, obviously, you're not getting those nice polka dots that I made um, so prettily, um, but that's just because the fur is not that dense. Now, um, the guy that commented also had, uh, it was Cuda 3 d I believe this was his username, um, also commented that when he created this, um, he, he found that the colors were becoming uh, very washed out. Um, there's a couple of reasons this might be happening to you, and if it's happening to you as well, other watcher, I'll show you what you can sort of do to solve the problem. Um, a quick and easy way to get it to pop a little bit more would be to apply the UV map for the hair to the skin as well. Uh, and this is obviously dependent on the mesh that you're using. If you do this, obviously, obviously it's going to add more color to it. So um, if I just grab this base color and pipe in uh, the body UVs as well to that, and you can see it's on the preview window there, and then we just render that. All right, so you can see uh, it's starting to pop a little bit more, but it's still pretty washed out. Why is that? Um, well, the light's trying to get in through all this fur, and the further the light has to go, the darker it gets, and you're going to perceive all that shadow. So that's part of the reason. Um, the other part of the reason is with the Marshner hair shader, you've got a, specul a lot of specularity. Um, the specularity is going to sort of mix with the... Um, with the with the color of the actual hair itself so you're seeing a blend between the specularity and the the uv color of the fur so to um offset that one thing i've, I've noticed is this kaija um kaijia um shader diffuse model is a little bit nicer it's a little bit richer you can actually change the specularity color as well if you've got a fairly flat um color then you might want to bring it to be something closer to the color that you're using. Uh, the other thing that you need to con uh, consider is your lights. If you've got a bunch of white lights, then it's going to make it look grayer. So I'll show you what I mean. If I just bring in a, a basic light, um, and if I could select it, that'd be really great. There we go. And um, turn them to face the model. And then we just go to the attribute editor and we change the color to be something a bit warmer. Sort of like a pinky, reddy, orangey sort of color. And then we have a look at that render and you'll see the difference it makes. All right, so already you're starting to see a lot more of that saturation come back in because the specularity color is changing. It's being affected by the light that you're putting in. So if I do the same thing again, um, I'll just duplicate this 
no, I will duplicate this, there we go, on the other side, and then change it to a cool light. And then render him again. You can see that makes a huge difference to the overall color and the color of the specularity is pretty much overriding the color of the UV map itself. So this is something else you need to consider. So when I just had the white environment shade lighting the whole thing, it was sort of washing out the overall color. Um, and the more dense your fur is, probably the more you're going to notice this because it's going to, you're just going to be seeing all the, the fur pressed against each other and the and the specularity is going to sort of overtake it so think about your light sources that's another thing that you should be considering as well let use your light sources to complement the colors of your model um, you have to be a little bit artsy fartsy and sort of play around with this one but the more you sort of play around with it the better it's going to look um, it does take a little bit of practice it's sort of a little bit of painting theory and lighting theory mixed in together um, to blend them together uh, to, to blend the two and understand what what exactly the result's going to be um, but I think that should pretty much cover it anyway that's that's the um, that's the order of events if anyone else out there is trying to figure out how to do this that's that's how I'd go about it um, you could also do it through the node editor that's probably be another way but it all starts to get a bit finicky in there sometimes I find so um, yeah if this video was helpful to you please hit like um, helps other people see them um, and if you hit subscribe you'll find that I'll be doing lots more Maya and Render Man tutorials in the future and if you are like the gentleman q to 3 d that requested this particular tutorial you could be like hey Michael uh, how do you do this in Maya slash Render Man and if I know how to do it I'll be like yo this is how you do it and I'll make a tutorial so yeah uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time